Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here as always. We are still plugging along with the 2023 Advent Calendar. We've gone through doors 1 through 14 so far. Uh, this episode is going to be 15 through 19. Uh, so far we've had some really good, really well designed stuff. I think my favorite so far has been the uh, Hailfire Droid. And close second, the Mando's N1 Starfighter. Really good builds this year. Um, hopefully the rest of the calendar is going to hold up to that. Uh, we're just going to start into 15 right now. Uh, I still haven't seen what any of these ones are. I've opened them up already for ease of access, but let's see what this is. This is... I'm not sure what this is. Could be... Okay, yeah, it's probably the, the Ewok Village. Browns and greens. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it's probably the Ewok Village. Sometimes they get these kind of big things and you got to scrunch them down into a tiny little concept and they get, ooh, everything's running away. Not my root beer. <laughs> Everything gets a little lost in translation when you have to scale it down sometimes. How do we build this? This is a bunch of pillars. On here, I think it's three pillars. I can see there's three pillars. I don't know where they connect on the bottom, but we'll we'll start with three for now. And then go to kind of the treehouse parts. You've got this one. A cylinder. Canopy, I guess. Foliage. I mean, kind of... These look more like pine trees back here. But I guess, you know, they were kind of pine trees. I, You know, I don't know where they filmed the Endor scenes. Hold on a second. Well, that just don't make any sense. So we've got... Does it only have one on the back there? Why would that only have one? Alright, so it's saying... That we have these like this. And that piece there and that connects sort of like a pathway up and then it connects on this That's what I'm missing. These guys rolled over and I couldn't see them. I am silly. Okay, that makes sense now. So I was thinking we were missing some, these brown cylinders. But no, they were just hiding. There we go. That makes so much more sense now. And this guy goes right here. And this guy goes right there. And then I assume these go underneath because it would be the continuation of the trunks. I'm assuming these bits are supposed to be like their huts. Trees, you got the ramp and you got the walkways around there. I mean, it's cute. That's cute. Uh, this probably means that the next one is going to be the Ewok. I would put money on that. All right, that's, ooh, that's not bad. Tell you what, it's a hell of a lot easier than building the Ewok Village set. <laughs> uh, I mean, not only is that set expensive, but it's notorious for the uh, the brittle browns. Like, if any of you have that set, I, I hope it's in good shape, because I've seen some 
some posts. Some kind of horror stories, really. 15. Oh, well, there's number 16. I didn't even look at what it was. It's not. Oh, it's the shield generator. Because it's usually, they do one, and then if there's a minifigure associated with it, it will be either the one before or the one after. But, they, they pulled a fast one on me here. Alright, how are we building this? Seems pretty straightforward. I'm knocking over all the stuff. We got these guys here. You got the sides. Oh, I goofed already. Look at that. Goofing at the first step. Get that back in there. You gotta have those all the way up to the top. So that the spud this the spuds. Mmm, potatoes. So that the studs are exposed at the top so you can actually put stuff on them. You get these that go all the way down flush to the bottom. More. Actually, no, this isn't the shield generator. This is the bunker on E. I was about to call Endor Ewok. Ewok land. It's on the bunker there. Um, which, you know, in a way is kind of the shield generator. I mean, it's the bunker that controls, not controls, conceals the shield generator. There you go. I mean, these these little spots here are a little bit precarious because it's only one stud and it's not even like locked in place but there you go you get your little little barker and yeah it it does correlate to uh the endor stuff so i guess it didn't really throw too much of a wrench in the gears which means maybe no it's still still not the ewok man i would have sworn what is this oh i think this is the at DP, I think is the term for it. I have the set. I have the first one. They they did do a remake of that. Uh, it's supposed to be like all-terrain defense platform or something. It's uh, kind of a precursor to the ATST during the uh, Clone Wars. Unless this is supposed to be something from. Oh no, I'm just looking at it wrong. Yeah, this is an ATST. Kind of threw me for a loop there because uh, the front leg and the back leg are different and didn't see that it didn't have a back leg on the other side. All right, so let's pop these legs on here. The ATST, honestly, they've overdone it. They have so many ATSTs, um, so many different versions too. I think the last one I got was the re-release of the Hoth one, which was a new design. It was actually following the kind of really long-legged version that they had in Empire Strikes Back, as opposed to the one that they had in Return of the Jedi. Um, and then you've got the one that they released for the Mandalorian set with the, uh, the pirates, the Klatu Klatuinians, I think that. People with the dog faces, the pug, pug faces from Klatuine, Klatuinians. Um, I think that was the most recent one before the Hoth one. And then I think the one before that was from... The sequels is the one where uh, BB-8 is uh, <laughs> piloting the legs of one. And that, that could have been a much better set, but I'm pretty sure that was one of the ones that based off of concept art. Because they do that a lot in order to have stuff come out in time for the movies. They'll send concept art to Lego. Like, there's there's also another walker that never actually made it into the movie from the sequels. It was that one where it had, like, the... looked like a Strand Beast. I don't know if you guys know what Strand Beasts are, but it's kind of that, that 
multiple leg sort of scuttle kind of design. And uh, they have a Lego set of that. I didn't get it. Um, but yeah, that never actually made it into the movie. So you run into that sometimes. Um, yeah, but that that's cute. That translates pretty well. Give you a little base for it. So that was, what was that, number 17? All right, two more. 18's way up here. And this, also another Endor. They're like really going hard on the Endor theme, which I like. I mean, it fits the overall box art. Uh, usually they're all over the place. They're not, not so thematic. Let's get these guys cut out of the way here. But I, I like it. They're, they're, they've got an overall theme, and it's kind of nice. This thing, I think, is going to be adorable. Uh, these little bracket pieces are fantastic. I'm glad they made these. You can go so many different directions with your Legos now. All these brackets, I'm not sure what they're officially called, oh. but they go up, they go down, they haven't done side, side one yet, but you wouldn't be able to because you have the little stud there and it has to connect and if you go that direction, there's nothing to connect to, um, we'll back, you got the front here, And these sort of paddle things are great. I use them for the uh, head and neck of my custom droids. See on the banner of my page. And then, uh, yeah, these things, which are sort of like lightsaber handles, but they're a little longer. They actually make pretty good, like, double-sided lightsabers. Um, and they scale really well. I'm not sure where, when they were first introduced, but I do know in, uh, the Monkey Kid sets, that's where I first got mine. Get the handlebars here. And these are usually like bucket handles, but you can get them for like... They, they use them for handlebars a lot, like control yokes and stuff like that. That is cute. It's a little little long in the front, and they don't have the side veins. But I'm just being nitpicky. That's really cute. That over here, all the spare parts. Always save your spare parts, guys. Always save them. Uh, last one is right here. Uh, this one had all, almost all the boxes down here on the bottom. Um, still not the Ewok. This is, uh, what is this? I mean, I would say Hoth. A little, uh, little defense turret, but it's got green. I don't remember, there's no green on Hoth. And I don't remember any laser turrets on Endor. Unless these little cylinders are meant to be something else. So I did know they had a lot of supplies and, and bins and stuff out on the surface on Hoth around all their stuff, you know, all the equipment, the trenches. That's, that's, you know, I'm, I'm going to assume that's what that is. Cause I, I've got no other thing for it. Unless it's some sort of, like those, oh, okay. This must be the communications uh, satellite. Those are the trees. I was getting the scale wrong. Because... 
you you have the landing zone, landing pad where Luke. I put that on backwards. Luke gets captured, and then he's, you know, turned himself over to Vader, and you know, you know that scene. Pretty sure there was some sort of satellite dish, It'd be communications over there on Endor. So yeah, there you go, another Endor theme set. This must be what that is. Would not have guessed they'd make a set out of that. So that's number 19. Still haven't got that, that Christmas Ewok yet. Like I've been, we got one, two, three, four, five in a row here. Uh, <laughs> six if you count Shuttle Tidarium. Seven, Leia. So we had like seven in a row here, all for Endor. And we, we still haven't got that Ewok. Watch the Ewok be the last one. Like, this is all very... Ah, man, every every door I opened, I was like, Ewok, no, not Ewok, something else, something cute. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's these five. Uh, we got one more set of five to do. Uh, it'll be Christmas in a few days. Uh, and I'll see you guys then. See ya.